This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Farm Bureau Health Plans has been protecting Tennesseans for 77 years. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at fbhp.com. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Snickers hot seat time for Titans senior writer, editor, Jim Wyatt. Welcome back to the OTP, Jim. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here on the Snickers hot seat. Could, you can have one if you do a good job. I've had a, my fair share of Snickers <laughs> in the last couple of months. You know, they had those big boxes they were trying to give away um, a couple of months ago. I took one of those 48 packs out. I think I'm down to five, maybe. Are you serious? Yeah. I had a little help in the house. The but thing about a Snickers is you never go wrong with a Snickers. No. It yep. is a great candy bar. But I mean, if you do Snickers ice cream, yep. if you do Snickers cake, yeah. you know, get one. Of, I mean, have you had the fruit, the fruit salad where they chop up the Snickers and yeah. mix it with the fruit? It's and so the, good. Oh, yeah. I've not had that. I get. shouldn't be eating Snickers. I've got diverticulosis, and the the pe- I'm not supposed to be eating peanuts. But uh, I, I always tell my wife, but you can't wife, turn down yeah, a Snickers. You, you can't chew, say no. If you chew it up real good, I feel like it's going to be okay. Yeah, you'll so be fine. So you contractually, you only agreed to appear once a year on the OTP, <laughs> <laughs> or is it twice a year? Yeah, I'm good to go whenever you need me. I know you've got have some great guests on here, so glad to find my way in here. Well, we're glad you're here. So these are going to be 10 questions for Jim Wyatt that prepare you for training camp. The OT people want to be ready, so these questions are very specific towards training camp. I'll take the first one. Jim has been doing the position previews at TennesseeTitans.com. So as you've run through those, what is the Titans' best position group as they enter training camp next week? It's funny. I, prepared, I appreciate you getting, giving me a heads up on what these questions were going to be. Oh, thanks uh, for uh, telling yeah. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so People I, get I got, fired for I, that. I got my little sheet, but that, that does help me. And I, well, I have to admit that um, – Who did that? <laughs> I have to admit, I, and I'm going to stick with my answer, but uh, you could go two ways on this. I went with receiver just because of the, you know, the veteran presence that you have with DeAndre Hopkins and now Calvin Ridley and Tyler Boyd, and you've got Traylon Burks competing with Nick westbrook as the as the number four. Jaquan Jackson coming in. I mean, you can get to six pretty quick and feel pretty good about the guys, even without getting to some other players who will be competing. So I'm going with that as my answer, but as we sat in the seat, I started thinking about other potential positions I could have picked, and the cornerback's one of them. I mean, you look you at you feel that good about corner. Yeah, just just because again, veteran presence up top with uh, with the Jerry Sneed coming in here, Jadobi Woozy, Roger McCreary, I think who is really developing. That's three really solid players. Really like Jarvis Brownlee. Think he's going to be a really good player. And then you know you're getting into Trey Avery, and you're getting into uh, whether or not Caleb Farley can have an impact. You've got several players. Eric, Eric, Gara. Eric Gara in there. Another guy that we're going to mention uh, here later is in that group. So um, I think those are the two, one and one A for me. You satisfied with that? I'm satisfied with that. And so as the resident wet blanket, I'm going to switch it over to what's the position group that you're most concerned about entering training camp? Yeah, and I have to say it's, it's O-line. I think you can feel comforted. Really? In the, and only huh. because there's so many questions. I don't have any doubt that Bill Callahan's going to get this group ready to play and that this this position group has acquired some really good players this offseason. I guess I'll look at that because there are so many unknowns. Um, you know, even even J.C. Latham playing well, on the yeah. left side is gonna, going to be playing on the left side for the very first time. He, he's a beast. We watch him in practice. We watch him after practice. He's going to be a great leader. I think he's going to really be a good player. Um, I think Skaronsky uh, on the left side is going to be better in year two. Year two. Lloyd Cushenberry, solid center. But on the right side, you, you still have a question mark. Who's going to be your right guard? Who's going to be your right tackle? You're going to have a, a group that has not – played together uh, yet. Uh, again, I think they've, they've got a great coach. Their technique's going to be improved. They're going to be holding e- each other accountable. But a lot of unknowns there. And some of these guys, you know, you know, especially Nicholas Petit-Ferrer, who's going to be in the mix, has, has had some injury history and some questions. So you've got injury questions. You've got, you know, 
how quickly these guys can gel and then what how things are going to come together in a, in a pretty short amount of time. What group did you think he was going to say? Uh, definitely not that group. Um, I, I don't know. I can't read Jim Wyatt's wine. What group did you think he was going to say? I thought maybe linebackers. Okay. Or, yeah. e- or even outside linebackers or D-line. D-line yeah. was number two on my list there. Okay. Just because you got Jeffrey Simmons is a sure thing after that. Some question marks there as, as well. You know, you got Tavondre Sweat, who we haven't seen much of. You got Sebastian Joseph Day, who's new to the group. Uh, I think he's going to be a good player, but still, you know, some question marks surrounding him. And you'll lose uh, an underrated player in Danico Autry, who impacts several positions, but uh, a big leader in that room you've got to replace. All right. Question three free agent addition you think will make the most immediate impact? I think Calvin Ridley, just because I think he changes things on so many different levels from his explosiveness to his speed to his playmaking ability. Uh, you know, Not only does that help his position, but it also helps the running backs. It helps your quarterback and Will Levis. It opens up the entire offense and will free other guys up like DeAndre Hopkins and and Tyler Boyd to make more plays. So I think Ridley makes a big impact. I mean, of, of all the guys I've watched throughout the offseason, he has stood out to me more than anybody else. Wow. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you are buying or selling tickets to Titans games or to any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So Titans fans can fan. Mike, did you enjoy taking your moment just then? I did. I thought you might like the little switcheroo. All right, Jim Wyatt, back to business. Position where an undrafted free agent could make the team. I'm going cornerback uh, because of the undrafted free agent who I think has stood out the most this offseason. That's Gabe Judy Lally. Uh, Again, that's a pretty deep position group. And you can get to four or five pretty quickly, but that's also a position group where you carry extra guys just because it's such a valuable spot. And I think he has been really good this offseason, been probably the most surprising of all the undrafted free agents. Can he hold up when camp starts? We'll see. I mean, he 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 has stood toe-to-toe with some pretty good players so far in non-padded practices, um, and I think he's he's got a chance to stick. It's funny because at Vanderbilt and at Tennessee, I think he was asked to do some of the things that he does well, but it feels like in the defense of Denard Wilson, in the secondary of Denard Wilson, Gabe Judy Lally maybe is being asked to do things that he very specifically does well. In other words, that this might be – the perfect fit for him. Yeah, he can play to his strengths, and the, and they know that. And and again, they've got corners who can do a lot of things. I mean, guys have played a lot of football um, that you feel like you're going to be good with. But to have other players that can come in off the bench that can help you, give you depth. He's got to show he can play on special teams. I think a lot of these guys that are in depth positions are going to have to be able to find a way to get on the field to make the team. But I think he's capable. Question five. Brian Callahan said on the OTP that starters would play in the preseason. How much playing time do you think Will Levis needs? Uh, you know, I think probably a quarter uh, mm. a game, maybe the last game, get him to the half. I mean, remember how it used to be, guys sure. would play into the third quarter. I don't know that I necessarily have to see that. Uh, but I think you do need to get him into more of a rhythm. Again, playing with some guys who are trying to get into more of a of a rhythm themselves. So, um, always a fine line on how much these guys need to play, how much they should play. Last thing you're going to do is get guys hurt. Uh, yes, I know there are some ex- examples of teams that have played their stars more in the preseason. Some of them have started off well. Other examples. Teams that don't play their starters still seem to be okay. But I think when you have a young quarterback who's still developing, didn't play a whole lot last year, probably helps to get him at least some uh, feel for the game before you're going to Chicago. If people get a chance, if you haven't watched the two-parter with Brian Callahan on the OTP, you could watch it on the Titans YouTube channel or go to TennesseeTitans.com. And obviously the OTP available anywhere 
that you get your podcasts. I thought Brian was really good in that, and and it's still timely because we have not started training camp yet. Absolutely, and he revealed a lot of things. He gave us a little peek behind the curtain into his thought process on some things, including playing time throughout the preseason. Did that surprise you that he said that as easily as he did? You know, not really. Um, I think that people expect that a little bit with a new coaching staff with so many guys that are new to this roster. I think the expectation is that you'll see – them a little bit more in preseason just to Jim's point as they're trying to build that chemistry as they're trying to you know figure out what works what doesn't work get it in a rhythm with one another not only just guys on the field but coaches with the players and just some of the more mundane like logistic things you just have to work through a little bit and you want to have your starters getting those reps to kind of understand how all of that's going to work so I I wasn't surprised that he said it because I think other people around the NFL expected it. Interesting. I think the fascinating thing with Callahan is, listen, we haven't gotten to game week and seen how he's going to act about an injury report. (laughs) He hasn't lost a game yet. He also hasn't had a fourth and one play call go badly yet. We understand all of those things. And yet, it doesn't feel like he sweats the small stuff like a lot of coaches around the NFL have been. Yeah, I agree. And it's funny, you know, the last day, I guess, what do they call it, field day for the players? Right, uh, the Olympics. Yeah, I was standing out there that day eating a – wasn't a cone ice, but it was some kind of a, one of those – special ice uh wasn't a snickers no it, was it wasn't a, a snickers it was a snowball was, yeah, i know what you were eating snowballs right uh, they had the, the food trucks out yes, there for the players yes so I, I was standing out there eating one of those and uh was it tiger blood i was eating the <laughs> tiger blood oh wow uh, yeah you good, and charlie sheen yeah, yeah. So i had a, well, I had a red tongue when we left too so <laughs> but so i was down there talking Winning. to him yeah <laughs> oh my gosh and i was ca- had a casual conversation with him and uh just about how could a feel it's been inside the building. Guys seem more relaxed, upbeat. And uh, and then in that, I, th- I think I kind of threw in, I know it'll change when the season starts and there's more pressure and you're playing games. And he's kind of stopped me and said, it shouldn't. You know, it shouldn't change uh, just because you're playing games. You know, guys should be relaxed. Guys should feel comfortable in the building. Guys shouldn't feel more stressed. Yeah, it's a serious business and you're trying to win games. But I don't, I don't want – the feel around the building to change. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was interesting. And it just kind of shows you the culture he's trying to create here, the culture he ha- has, I think, already created here. And uh, I think part of that's because of who he is. Part of it's because of the guys he brought with him on the coaching staff. Part of it is because of the, the players he's assembled in this locker room. And, um, and I think Guys just feel more relaxed and uh, and are maybe more in it together. Don't you think there's a genuine confidence to him? Yes. Not, yep. Certainly not shooting his mouth off, looking to troll people and things of that sort. But he just – it's like, yeah, I, I think I know what I'm doing and I'm going to go do it. Yep. And this is how it's going to be. And, yeah, we'll have bad days, but we'll also have more good days and so on and so forth. Yeah, I think so. And I think a lot of that's because of where he's been and who he's been around and, and people he's learned from, and including his father, who uh, was a great get and is, is kind of a stabilizing force, I'm sure, for him. So he feels like what he's bringing to Tennessee is going to work. It's not going to be perfect right out of the gate, but uh, – he definitely got a, a quiet confidence about him, not cocky, no swagger at all, just a guy who um, is ready to work and, and feels good about where things are going with Rand Carthon. I'll tell you what, he's been exactly the same person from the very first day that we hired him sitting in his living room talking to him as he is today. Oh, that's an interesting point. Exactly same human being. He's had the same quiet confidence, very same kind of, yeah, I feel like I can do this job. This this is something that I know how to do and I'm ready for. And he hasn't wavered in that feeling that he knows what he's doing, feeling that he is completely the right person for this job and is totally capable and he's not loud or over the top about it. He's just kind of a guy that's doing what he we is supposed this. to be doing. Yeah. Very confident, very easy. So that's great. But Happy for Brian Callahan. Happy he's here. Happy he's comfortable. Excited to see him Moving doing football. Moving on is what you're I saying. would like to really, really get back to the offensive line, okay. especially because sure. Jim kind of threw us with his initial answer of it being a, a place for concern for him. So let's dig into that. The right side of the offensive line 
is undetermined as we enter training camp, which Jim said earlier. Is there a player at either the right guard or right tackle who could end up being a surprise starter? Mm. Yeah, and I'm, fi- I'm, I'm going to jump back to that uh, concern answer too. And, and part of the reason I should have said earlier, part of the reason for concerns has been so it's been rough the last. Well, couple and of years. that's yeah. fair. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and I think your your answer is correct. I think I had fallen into the trap of. Oh, they've improved the talent, and oh, Bill Callahan's here. It's going to be fine. Yeah. And you brought me back to reality. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's been rough, and, 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 and I'm just kind of a, a feeling you just can't snap your fingers and expect everything's going to be fixed. And, That's fair. and mm-hmm. I, I think it will improve, but I certainly have questions there, and I, and I know the questions uh, on the right side are the biggest ones for me. Uh, surprised that I feel like I'm cheating to some degree because I've been able to watch all these off-season practices and I've seen guys work, so I feel like I got a better feel. I think if you'd ask me at the start of the off-season who I thought the starters would be, and I shouldn't say start of the off-season, but maybe once the practice, before the practices started, who I thought the starters would be, I probably would have said Daniel Brunskill at right guard. Probably would have said Nicholas Petit for at right tackle. I'm going with Sadiq Charles as the right guard. Um, if, I don't know if that qualifies as a surprise, but, you know, with, with him in the mix, with Brunskill and Raidens, a couple of guys that have been here, I think he's, I think Sadiq Charles got a great chance to win that job, um, like his size, like his strength. I um, think he's got the mindset to win that job. And then I'm going with Petit Freer at right tackle. Got to stay healthy. Has not been able to do that of late. Had a, just a – Forgettable year last season yeah, with the lost suspension, it. yeah, and then got lost hurt. Year. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so I think he is the guy to beat out there, but he's got to got to be in the race, and um, and that's not a given. I think the right tackle thing is really more fascinating than what people know because on paper you say Nicholas Petit Frere was the starting right tackle all the way through his rookie year, did a serviceable job you felt like he'll improve and that he can develop into that spot. But then you've got Leroy Watson, right. who they bring in from Cleveland, who had been with Bill Callahan, and he's capable. And then John Ajuku, who, yes. took, who took a lot of one reps at right tackle through the offseason, I, I think Ajuku may be the surprise. Interesting. Yeah, I mean – that's what this time of year is for, you know. This is this is something where it, guys are given the ability to rise and show what they can do and earn that spot. And Ajuku's an interesting one. Ajuku's interesting. And then Dylan Raiden's a guard. Yes. Dylan Raiden's played better football last year than he got credit for, I think. In the midst of what was a bad offensive line year, he did some nice stuff. And now that he's fully concentrating at guard, you you just wonder. Yeah, and I like I like the way he approaches things. I mean, he knows he came in here with a lot of pressure on him, and uh, hasn't been easy. And he's he's had to bounce from position to position. And now, just said he's kind of locked in and learning one spot, or or shouldn't say learning it, trying to to solidify himself at that one spot. Um, I think coaches certainly like him, and um, curious to see how that plays out. Word from our friends at Pinnacle Financial Partners. Open a Titans checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by August 2nd, and you could receive two tickets to five home games. Details at titansbanking.com. Titans checking from Pinnacle. Play hard, bank easy, member FDIC. All right, question seven. Is Tavondre Sweat going to be the most watched and most talked about draft pick in training camp? Probably so, because I think at this point, people have seen enough of J.C. Latham to know this guy's, you know, this guy's going to be reliable. He's going to work. You know, there's no mystery surrounding him. You, you kind of know what you you're going to get. don't feel like there yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but with Sweat, there's a lot of mystery surrounding him. You know, had a lot of questions coming in here. Uh, got a sneak peek of him right out of the gate, and then he's kind of been working on his own. I think – some of it's been rehab. Some of it's just been precautionary. Uh, we all know the the size that he is and the strength that he has and the potential that he has, but um, but need to see it. And uh, he's got a big personality, so he's going to be fun to watch. And uh, and he's going to be a guy who's going to be criticized if he's not able to be out there early. You know how 
He was an early second round pick, yes. and mm-hmm. most of the draft prognosticators did not have him there. So fair or not, that immediately puts him on people's radar because a there were a lot of other nice players that had been mentioned at that spot that you chose not to take. But also, it's like okay, the Titans really believed in you this much. Are you going to pay it back? Yeah, and and right now sitting here before camp starts, you just don't know. Like right. we we have not seen much of him. I've seen him in the building. Love his personality. Oh, he's going to be fun, <laughs> and uh, so you want him to be out there and you want him to be good. But um, but he's got to be able to stay healthy and and. Uh, that's another thing you just can't snap your finger expecting. Like, he's got to get into shape. And, and I don't know what he's done here over the last several weeks, uh, even when camp starts. I mean, I think th- hopefully the weather is it's supposed to be 100 degrees here in Nashville. Uh, I think next week maybe it'll be a little bit cooler. I've already ch- started checking those long-term forecasts. But Devondre Sh- Sweat probably checking them uh, too because getting out there as a 350-ish pounder, um, it's gonna be hard to move around in that heat, and uh, and he's gonna have to be able to hold up and and uh, not only be in shape, but be able to line up across from somebody on the other side of the football that's that's making contact with well, him now. And the Titans need him to help. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. when you talk about the defensive line and and some of the question marks, I mean, it would it would help a lot if he's a regular contributor, if not a starter. Yeah, that I mean, that's a position where they need uh, they need help, but they need big help. Yeah, I like how you did <laughs> Isn't that. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Thank you. With the gesture. Yeah, with the yeah. gesture, because he is big. He is big. And would be a big help. Um, so, yeah, he's somebody who uh, there's a little bit more pressure to be able to perform right away because there is a need right now. That's right. I like this line of questioning. Can we continue on this way? Let's do it. All right. So if Traylon Burks is going to be the most watched and most talked about current Titan, who do we think is going to be number two and number three on that list? I think, I mean, if it feels like cheating, but Will Levis, uh, you know, okay. the quarterback is always. Uh, yeah, that's is, cheating. Is always <laughs> yeah. going to be watched and scrutinized. And uh, it, it happened during the offseason. It's going to happen again in this first camp going into his first camp as the starter in a new offense with uh, with a lot of moving parts around him. So I think Levis is one, uh, and Burks is definitely is going to be – everything he does is going to be scrutinized. I think I'm, I'm mentioning Ridley again. I think he's going to be talked about a lot because I think he's going to make plays and he's going to have a lot of wow moments. I think um, because, he, because of the newness, I think Jamal Adams and, um, you know, I don't know that he's – going to make the wild plays in practices like Calvin Ridley will, but he is certainly people can be watching him just how he handles himself. He comes, he has some swagger to him, uh, how they're going to use him. Uh, all that is going to generate, I think, a lot of conversation. All right. Question nine. Jack Gibbons was a favorite of the former coaching staff because he always did everything the right way. The new coaching staff has said the exact same things. So, has Jack Gibbons Gibbons improved enough that he'll be a starting inside linebacker for week one? Uh, If I had to say today, I'd say yes. Uh, And uh, I think he is the favorite. I'll say that. And Cedric Gray's got a chance to, to overtake him. But I don't know if he has enough time to do it just because of the reputation Gibbons has and just because uh, of, I think, how he'll do. You know, at the end of of the offseason, I did maybe a 10 Titans who stood out the most on the offseason. I listed Jack Gibbons on there, and I said he was the favorite uh, heading into the season. And I think maybe the first comment on there was, it's a rare Jim Wyatt bad take. Rare, rare bad take from Jim Wyatt, which I kind of took as a compliment. Mm-hmm. You know, if they're <laughs> saying it was rare, but but I noticed that, and I'm thinking, you know, p- people maybe underrate Jack Gibbons a little bit. Um, but with all that, well, he's seen as the try-hard guy. Yeah, that's he, the yeah. that's the thing. You know, you get players in any sport, and they're seen as. He's a better athlete than what people know. Yes. He's really improved his athleticism. Last year, the coaching staff was thrilled with how he improved his speed. Right. Uh, I mean, this is a guy who can play some football. Yeah. But in the offseason, 
every narrative was, oh, I mean, he he might not even make the team, you know, and and, and I get that. I mean, I'm not criticizing people for saying that, but I don't think they they necessarily realized who he is, and that was some of the reason for the surprise that he took virtually every one rep that I saw. Right. Yeah, and, and and I think a lot of people feel like he's just holding that spot until you get Cedric Gray comfortable and then he moves in, and, and that could – Sure. That could happen. I mean, could that's happen. what you compete. I mean, that's why you compete. That's what training camp's all about. You know, some of these other positions we've talked about. Yeah, we can say who we think might win the job, but when, once you get out there and you're competing and you're competing in practices against the Seahawks and preseason games and and going at it every day, guys pass one another. You know, you you just it can't happens. you can't mm-hmm. pencil a guy in in July. But uh, but I think that Jack Gibbons is the favorite. I think Cedric Gray is going to have a role. I think Cedric Gray is going to be a good player. And, prob- and will end up being a starter for this team at some point. It's just a matter of how soon. And uh, but if I had to, you know, if you don't put me on the spot and I had to fill out who I think this be in the starting lineup uh, in Chicago, I would I think Jack Gibbons will be inside back or next to to Murray. All right, you've got the tenth and final. I have the tenth and final question, Jim Wyatt. Will a Brian Callahan training camp look markedly different from a Mike? Vrabel training camp you know I don't know it'll if it'll look markedly different I, I think Vrabel being a former player himself uh, you know very conscious of not overworking guys proved that by not playing the starters much in the preseason and just by the way his practices were structured so many walkthroughs I think Brian Callahan is in an interesting spot because he has such a different team I mean you've got guys who veteran guys whether it's Jeffrey Simmons or DeAndre Hopkins or Calvin Ridley or Tyler Boyd or um, you know, Jamal Adams. You can go down the list of players who probably don't need a lot of work. You don't want to overwork some of these guys. They'll probably get days off. But then on the flip side of that, you've got younger guys like Will Levis. And and certainly, you know, I think you could throw Tajay Spears in that group and and all the rookies uh, that actually need a lot of work. So sure. it's an interesting mix in how you blend it all together. You've got to have competition and you've got to get players to gel like the offensive line. So um, I don't know if it'll look a lot different. I certainly think that um, you know that he will be aware of not putting too much on guys. And there's a such a long runway to the season now. I mean, we're getting ready to start here next week, and the season doesn't start until September the 8th. You don't want these guys worn out um, before the season starts. So. But everything's new. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. it's a completely new offense. It's a completely new defense. Completely new special yep. teams with a new kickoff rule. Oh, right. <laughs> You've got a new coaching staff that's never worked together. I mean, in essence, even though – over, I guess, 60-ish percent of the roster is back. 40% of the roster is new, which is a lot. But because of the fact that all the coaches have changed and the systems changed and the terminology's changed, everybody's new. They need as much work as they can get to be ready for yeah, September. It's true. And can you accomplish that in walkthroughs? I don't think so. You know, you got you got to have some full speed stuff. And uh, so that's where you got to find that balance of what's too much, what's not enough on a team that has a, a, a tremendous blend of old and, and new. Yes. Yes. I think there is a lot to uh, look forward to in training camp. Jim, I don't love that you sold us out in the beginning <laughs> saying that we gave you the questions in advance. So I think. That's not great. Yeah, I think what we should do, though, is hit him with some questions that maybe he isn't prepared for. Oh, so I would bonus. like to know, Jim Wyatt, just to put you on the spot. Of the Titans training camps that you've been to, which I think it's all of them, um, what are some of your favorite training camp memories? Moments oh, that really just light your fire, yeah, get yeah, you excited. I think the goal, I mean, when they went to goal line, like some of these, I mean, it's funny, I, I don't, I'll probably pass out on the practice field in the first week, uh, but practice, training camp practices back in the day were 8.30 to 11, 3.30 to 6 every single day. It was just a blur. And uh, and then you always know when, uh, you know when the first padded practice was. You always knew when the first goal line was. I think some of those goal line uh, 
drills stood out to me the most was it Wachek and Camella they got in a fight one time in training camp. Remember that? No, it wasn't Wachek and Camella. It was Boyman. it was it was it was Boyman yeah. and Wachek. Camella got in one maybe with uh, I don't know if him and Greg Favors overlap. We've seen some Greg good, Favors got in several yes, he did. scrapes. Chris Sanders got in a rare one with maybe Perry Phoenix one time. Uh, some of those we used to have some all out brawls, brawls in camp, mm-hmm. and I hate to say that those <laughs> were some of the moments that stood out the most, but. Uh, it was different back then. Well, the Frank story about Rocky Boyman, and Rocky, if you're watching this. I, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for watching, first of all, or you're listening. Frank Frank was not a big fan of Rocky Boyman. Maybe later in life he was, but he really did Boyman not. Boyman was scrappy, yeah. He did not yeah. care for Boyman's enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. Because here's Frank, and Frank's, I mean, this was 2001, I guess, Boyman was drafted. Is that right? That's probably uh, – Or 2002? Two, right right that, in there. Two, I think it was 2002. So, Frank's yep. right at the end. And Frank Frank wants to practice and do his stuff and do his Frank things and then get off there. Well, I mean, if you're a veteran player, particularly in those days when you went full pads, you don't expect rookies to hit you or to bother you or to grab you or to whatever. Well, Rocky thought his job – was to actually play linebacker in the NFL. That's what he thought he had been drafted <laughs> for. He didn't realize that Frank Wycheck did not expect to be touched. <laughs> and so, man, it made Frank so mad. And then Rocky did what Rocky would do. He went back at him. You know, he, yeah. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> oh, and, and I mean, it was, oh, gosh, Frank. Frank did not like Rocky Boyman at that. Again, yeah. I'm sure Golly. later in life they got I over it. it and yeah, so, but at that point, I mean, he wanted Rocky. Yeah, you know. the fights definitely some that stood out. And, you know, a couple of other funny stories. I remember when remember when when rookie holdouts used to be a thing. You know, with the draft mm-hmm. picks now they're signed and sealed back in June. And you don't have to worry about it. But it used to be that these things would drag on. Albert Hainsworth went on forever. Pac-Man Jones has went on forever. You know, missed like 22, 23 oh, yeah. practices. And I remember, you know, Pac-Man who who had a lot of chatter around him uh, anyway before he took the field in training camp. Uh, he finally signed it, agreed to his deal, signed it. All the reporters were waiting for him to come out the door. Uh, couldn't figure out where the heck Pac-Man was. And, and Watterson had stuck Pac-Man, I guess, on one of the equipment carts and hit a bunch of dummies around him where he s- somehow got on that cart behind the building and came out on the field without anybody noticing and then popped out with the cornerbacks. That was kind of <laughs> funny. There was uh, Jake Sprague. Does that name – Jake Sprague, uh, I think, was the – I hope I get the name right. Was a was a player here that had an injury. Could never get him healthy. Um, I think some people suspected that he could practice uh, and was kind of nursing it to stick around longer. Watterson took him out in training camp in a uh, in a kayak and had him working working on, on yeah, around yeah, Lake Amulet. Yeah, Lake Amulet had this guy in this kayak during training camp while everybody else was on the field just rowing this kayak through <laughs> he was worn out and i think this guy the next day said okay i'm ready to practice and he got back to practice amazingly and, healed. Yeah, he got healed and then he got cut the next day uh, <laughs> but i think he maybe ended up on lake okoe uh, yes yeah, so he Lake was Koei an olympic uh, yes. an olympic yes. uh, kayak yes so and then of course you know the, the training camp battles that you watch and it's always fun to watch the new quarterbacks come in whether it's vince young or jake locker or or, uh, or now will levis it's just um Time has flown by. And then the guys who can really play, you're like, oh, yes. like Chris Johnson, yes. you're like, oh, my goodness, he's really for real. Yes. And then there are sometimes guys who really can't play. Uh, we signed an extra quarterback one year in the early <laughs> days yeah. from an SEC school that I won't mention. <laughs> and he went out the first day, and, I mean, he couldn't throw. Yeah. No. I mean, he, it was like, you've got to be kidding me. And <laughs> I remember the quarterback you're talking about. Yeah, and he was yeah. waved the next day. Yeah. And, you know, it was – people were watching this from the media standpoint and from just the observer standpoint, and they're thinking, is – what? But <laughs> – now, granted, he was not – all he was signed to be was a training camp arm. I yeah. mean, nobody thought he would make the team or even get close. 
But I mean, he wasn't even that. No. So, oh no, and yeah. that happens. That doesn't yes. really happen anymore. But back in how the Heisman Trophy winner come in here and uh, had a, an experience uh, where he ended up retiring, and yes. uh, because it was such kind of a, a rude awakening for him. Yeesh. not great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I know that was you're getting a lot of answers from me, but I'm kind of going down memory lane here. But some players have had, unfortunately for them, had some birthdays during training camp. Oh, yes. mm. Birthdays around here used to be a thing, and uh, where you really tried to keep a low profile. Samari Roll had a, I think an August birthday during camp, and uh, they tied him to the goal post. Yes, and uh, he got <laughs> everything. Then they poured talc yeah. and powder all yes, over him. Yes. And Yes, and, and uh, among other Hershey, things, so they went in the Hershey cafeteria syrup. and just got everything you could think of and yeah. just unloaded yeah, if you think on them. The Ben yeah. Jones birthday yes. stuff was significant. This that was, was nothing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some uh, it's hard to believe we're now uh, rolling into. I guess I started covering this team in '99. Now heading into another camp. First one was out in Bellevue. Oh yes, behind mm-hmm. the pediatrician's office. Yes. Yep. Yes. The tra- trailers. Well, well, the I mean. I TSU. Was before, yeah, I was before, that was before my time. Okay, I, so yeah, I went to, back further. I yeah. went to TSU, and uh, I lived in the Miss TSU suite in '98. <laughs> of course, you did. Yeah. Well, because my yep. fam my family was not here, and they were still in Knoxville. We had not sold the house yet, and so um, they said, "Would you like to live in the dorm?" I'm like, "Absolutely." Mm-hmm. So they gave me the Miss TSU okay. suite, which was really great, <laughs> and. Uh, it was, it was like a million degrees every day, two practices, full pads every day. And then the, the most interesting part was the food because, I mean, there was no nutrition in 98. No. It was T-bone steaks and giant baked potatoes and stuff with gravy. And, <laughs> yeah. and then they had like a – they had this whole case of ice cream that you could make yep. a chocolate sundae. And then they had snacks at night. And See, I, that's how training camp used to be. Yep. The yeah. good old days yeah. of good food. Yes. I mean, but I mean, that's, when we, that's when we still had a couple guys on the team that smoked. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Smoke I cigarettes. I believe you. <laughs> so they would go, you know, they would slip out and, and nobody thought anything of it. <laughs> It's funny, uh, Amy was talking about you wearing linens maybe during camp. I bet when you were in that Miss TSU suite, you, you probably had, yeah, you'd have had a lot of linens not maybe really, in your closet. Not really. But <laughs> speaking of that, my question for you, my bonus question for you is, are you prepared to get a new visor for training camp? Because now you're wearing your Dodgers today, which is sort of your newer version of the Dodgers. Yes. Yeah. It's sort of clean. You're, Jim, I'm, I'm here to do an intervention. Your Titans – Visor, raggedy. <laughs> I've got a couple of Titans visors. Funny, it's all about the fit with me. And some of the Titans visors, the new air ones that uh, that are distributed, kind of got a little well, bulky on the side. Let's Look at work, Look at here. Let's work on this. So this we're, is we're uh, here to quite help. a yeah. selection here. We're okay, here yeah. to help. <laughs> Jim Wyatt, it is time to pick out a new visor. You could go with a bit of a khaki. Okay, that's nice. This and is going to give me some good And it's got the options. American flag on the okay. side there, which is very Look nice. USA, yeah, wow. yeah. USA. Uh, with the, the Olympics right okay. around the corner. And then you could go Oilers. Okay, I like that. All right. A little you, more rigid fit. A little more yeah. rigid fit. That's a good option right there. Okay. By the way, you don't get to keep them all. <laughs> you just get one. You get one. Okay, then a little little Titans, a little okay. kind of a, okay. a, little bit of a nice. navy. Yeah. Is this the 2024? This the These are all the 24s. Okay. Yeah, okay. these are 24s. Uh, the head of equipment, Joy Barranco, sent these up to you. And then the Titans blue, just sort of, I would call that the traditional. It yes. is, yes. The, yes. the yeah, favorite. The okay. All right, yeah. so oh, what do man, we like? That's a tough. So I've got a couple similar to this. This is new. I don't have the Oilers, and this is kind of more my style here, a little, little uh, yeah. not as flashy. Yeah. I get to pick one. Boy, it have to one. be between one of these two. Because we're uh, not wearing Oilers till week 18. Yeah. So th- this is for training camp. Yeah. So I but if you want to go Oilers, you could go Oilers. I would probably say this one. All right, yeah. so you keep that yeah, one. This. Yeah. The, uh, the Olympic visor. Plus, they go with they go with my cargo as well. They do, which yeah. is great. So, you gotta, so you're matching. Oh, I think I would. I think <laughs> yeah. I would probably go with this one. But you don't wear visors. I know. I think he could switch to visors. Oh, that's a good look on Mike. He yeah. cannot switch to visors. That actually looks pretty good. Mike. Why can I not wear a visor? I think he could do it. He could pull that visor off. Absolutely not. No? No. (laughs) (laughs) 
You Why? are not a visor man. Who's a visor? I mean, how do you Jim get to, is a visor man. I transitioned to the visor. I used to, I, I've used never to be a visor seen you man. in a ball cap. Yeah, I, I used can't to have take a Mike seriously. Oh, the, probably the only way you can find me a ball cap is I do on my Twitter profile. I've got myself wearing a, a ball cap. Uh, back at my first training camp, it was a Dodgers cap in 99 with Eddie, Eddie walking George. alongside Eddie George. Right. And, uh, but then at some point, uh, I think, um, because I did become a pencil guy over the years. And right. and uh, you keep a pencil behind the ear wearing sunglasses with the hat. It's always falling out. So visor cooler, but also you can stick the pencil up there where you can easy access to the uh, to the pencils with the visor. But Jim, Wait a minute. Okay. You switched your headgear for a pencil, pencil access? Pencil yes. and cool, probably coolness, too. Yeah. Probably well, the combination of the two. That is commitment to your craft. But yeah. when, did you, <laughs> when did you become full-out visor? When did it become – because you're oh, visor every day. Yeah, probably uh, 10 years ago, maybe. Okay. 10, 15 years ago. Did you make that decision? Did you say – I'm wearing this every day. I'm wearing this. This is not, a part of the me hat now. head is not as bad. Like you can. Uh, it's you true. Know, because you yeah. go hat, and by the end of the day, you know. Oh, mine, there's no mine going looks back. bad. Yeah, but you I can. I have to get new glue to glue it back on. So you, you can recover. <laughs> you can recover from a bad hair day with a visor a little bit easier. Mike. No? Yep. Absolutely not. Why? It just doesn't work. I'd like to. I mean, I, this would be new and, you know. No. No? I think it's a good no. look on them. You no. do? Yeah, I, I think you could pull that off. I think it maybe fluffs your hair too much. It, yeah. Uh, you do get a little more sunburn with the visor, I'll say yeah. that. Like uh, you get a fresh cut. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you nobody don't wanna, wants that. Yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah. Jim and I have been through yes. some of that. Well, like, yes. mm, and you've got, I mean, welcome you, have, to Moe's. you have such a nice <laughs> bucket hat. I do. You have the bucket hat. Well, I'm supposed, like to, the, I'm supposed to be wearing something bucket. Yeah. All the time now, as far as hats, but I like hats at training camp. I like I a know. I like a ball cap. I know you do. This is not going to work, work for you. You are a ball cap kind of guy. But we have yeah. served. The yes, ball. I think he's, he's done well here. Thank God. I, I mean, it, I mean, you always look great, Jim. But <laughs> it was time. It, it was a little yeah. ratty. It was time. I mean, people. Have I called do have us. some ratty ones. I've got some yeah. other ones a lot worse shape than this one. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Believe me. We're done. We've got to wrap this up because we've we've taken a, a turn into fashion it's land. Fashion land. Yeah. Jim Wyatt, senior writer, editor, TennesseeTitans.com. All the articles are fabulous. The Twitter thing, the real reason we have Jim on is we're trying to get his social media rub. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> he's got so him. many followers. How do people follow you on the Twitter? At Jay Wyatt Sports on Twitter. I had a Twitter scare this offseason. I mean, shut, my Twitter shut down on me for probably – Almost two days. Uh, I was Whoa. completely locked out. Uh, tried to message Twitter and didn't get a response. And uh, had Colton from uh, Colton Belmondo. Col Col yeah. Col Colton, shout help, out help, Colton. Yeah, Colton helped work with me to get this thing back and running again. And uh, so Twitter is still alive and and kick. I just try not to ever sign out because I may have trouble signing back yeah. in. That was yeah. my problem. So, uh, but at Jay White Sports on Twitter, Instagram. I post all my stories on Facebook, not on TikTok. Um, Probably for the best. I'm on Snapchat, but only snapping my wife and my daughter and my son. Uh, got like okay. A, got like an 1800 day streak with my daughter going. That dates Whoa. back to her days in college. Wow. Yep. Whoa. Trying to keep that alive. Well, that's great. That's pretty impressive. What about TikTok? Should I get on TikTok? Uh, Either get you what guys are you going to do on the TikTok? Yeah. Dance? I uh, I don't need to dance. Mike? TikTok? What? No. Are you ticking and talking? No, I'm enjoying Instagram at Ten Voice. By the way, I'm yeah. really, I'm really enjoying Instagram. You do a good job on Instagram. You are. Thank you. Yes. Thank yes. you. I think I found my place. Yes. Yeah. I'm on Twitter too at at Ten Voice. That's T E N N Voice. I think you need to put on Instagram. Maybe get some some feedback on whether you're not this visor bit. I don't ask for, for you. feedback. Oh, I, 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 I yeah. can tell you what the feedback would be. I know. Uh, be positive. I, yeah. I'm, that's okay. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> We talk, I'm here to provide the feedback. We talk ball and broadcasting and occasionally a funny something or other, but yeah. no, not no thank you. We're yeah. not doing fashion show. No. Not interested in being an influencer. And yet the influence you have <laughs> none. is I Zero. Mean, vast. <laughs> Zip. Vast. Yes. No. For Jim Wyatt, <laughs> for Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for joining us for the OTP. I'm keeping the visor. No. Uh-uh. It's a good look. It is not. <laughs> Visors and cargoes are back. <laughs>